Hello and welcome to Trojan Sports Now. I'm Sarah Drake. And I'm Justin Walker. Stick around as we bring you the latest news and scores from Troy Athletics. The Trojan football team improved their record to 3-1 and one last Saturday after a thrilling win against Akron in the vet on Saturday. I don't know a better way to say this, but that was an ugly football game. That's the one word Troy head football coach Neil Brown used to describe the team's 22-17 win over the Akron Zips Saturday night at Veterans Memorial Stadium. And although the win was not pretty, Brown talks about how the Trojans still have a chance. There's a lot of learning points from here. Uh, I'm not real pleased with how we played in any of the three phases, but I know we have a chance, even though we've not played anywhere close to our potential. Because two weeks in a row, we found ways to win games at the end. And despite the Trojans' 16 penalties for 159 yards, Brown is still proud of this team for finding a way to win. We've been a part of a game like that. And all of them may have been guilty. I have no idea. I'm sure we're guilty of our share, but it was just, it was just an ugly game. Uh, there's no better way to say it. But we're three and one. And uh, pray over our team for finding a way to win. Brown also says that the defense did not play their best defensive game on Saturday. We've got a, we finally got some pressure down the stretch, but we can play better. I mean, I, I'm not going to sit up here. I'm glad we won. But we've, we've got some issues. we got to get corrected in all, all three phases. And after Akron's punter Nick Gasser pinned the Trojans at the three-yard line, Brandon Silvers led the Trojans down the field 97 yards. With 66 seconds left, Silvers dropped a pass to DeAndre Douglas in the end zone for the game-winning touchdown. Rolling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown, coach. And Brown speaks on why he enjoys coaching Douglas. Well, he's a guy that works extremely hard. Um, one of my favorite guys to coach just because he loves competing and he works at it, means a lot to him. Um, didn't didn't play very well the first two weeks. He's bounced back, and, and his number, I think he's had seven catches for this week is 92. I think last week is over 100, and, and that's what we really have come to expect from him. The Trojan soccer team suffered a heartbreaking loss against the Coastal Carolina Chanticleers on Friday at the CCU Soccer Stadium. The team fell in double overtime 2-1. The Trojans led for 78 minutes of the match, but with just 59 seconds to play, a ball zipped past Troy's goalkeeper to seal the loss for the, Tro for the Trojans. Julia Winter did manage to extend her team lead with her fourth goal of the season. This was the third overtime game for Troy this season. And after that heartbreaking loss to Coastal Carolina, the soccer team finished their trip to the Carolinas off with a win against Appalachian State on Sunday. Troy defeated the Mountaineers 1-0. Katie Lorenz scored the lone goal for Troy in the 88th minute. The shutout gave goalkeeper Mickey Lewis the school record for wins with 36 in her Trojan career. Lewis also owns the school shutout record with 29. Troy will not take the field again until Sunday when it welcomes in Sunbelt rival South Alabama. Kickoff for that game is set at 1 p.m. at the Troy Soccer Complex. The Trojan volleyball team opened conference play over the weekend and got off to an 0-2 start against the Texas teams of the Sun Belt. The Trojans fell to UT Arlington 3-1 in their first Sun Belt conference match of the season. Troy got on the board first with a 3-1 advantage, but a seven-point run from UT Arlington swung the momentum in the opposite direction. The Trojans stayed close, but the Mavericks broke away with a three-point run late to win the, to win the set 25-21. Mavericks took three straight points to the second set at 24, but Troy shut them down, winning the set 26 to 24. The nom dominating 25 to 15 win in the third set from the Mavericks gave UTA a two to one match lead. The Trojans rallied back, staying close with the Mavs in the fourth set. A five point run for Troy put the Trojans within two late in the set, but the Maverick offense came back firing to take four straight points to take the set and the match. And the team wrapped up its trip to the Lone Star State with a 3-0 loss to Texas State on Sunday. The Trojans stayed neck and neck with the Bobcats early in the first set, but a few solid runs from Texas State handed the Bobcats a 1-0 lead in the match as the momentum stayed on the home side. Texas State went on an 8-point run in the second set to force the Trojans to use two of their timeouts. A kill out of the huddle from Bell Waldrop gave Troy a much needed point to close out the gap on a 10 point Bobcat lead. But the Trojans could not find the answers they needed. In the third set, the Bobcats jumped out to an early lead as Troy was not able to find a lead. Troy State defeated Troy Texas State defeated Troy 25-12 in the third set to earn its ninth win of the season. Cheyenne Hayes and Jenny Young each posted eight kills and eight points for the Trojans in the match. Last weekend, the women's cross-country team made the trip to Gainesville to participate in the Mountain Dew Classic. 
The Trojans finished in the middle of the pack, 16 out of 30 teams. However, the team's top runners were not participating. Bay head coach Elliot Blount says the results for the rest of his crew was promising. That was my main concern. I mean, we're pretty top heavy when it comes to our three freshman girls running pretty well, Christy Carr and, and Mackie running pretty well, but we needed four through seven to kind of, you know, kind of pick up the slack. And that's what they did uh, this past Saturday and it was very reassuring. Now, it probably wouldn't show necessarily in the results, but as far as what I wanted to see out of that meet and that day, they did exactly what we wanted them to do. Up next, the Trojans will head up to Oxford to compete in the JSU Foothills Invitation on Saturday. The Troy men's golf team finished 11th at the Shoal Creek Intercollegiate, which concluded Tuesday at the Shoal Creek Country Club. Junior Callum Masters and freshman Ike Alexander both shot one over on the day to lead the Trojans. Masters paced Troy with a three over 219 over the 54 hole event to tie for 23rd place. Number 11 Wake Forest won the team title by seven shots over Liberty. The event featured 10 teams ranked in the golf stat top 100. Troy returns to the site of its NCAA regional appearance last season when the Trojans compete in the intercollegiate at the Grove in College Grove, Tennessee on October 8th. Still to come on Trojan Sports Now, we'll have a preview of the Trojan football team's matchup against the LSU Tigers. But first, Sarah sits down with women's golf head coach Randy Kick. Stick around for more Trojan Sports Now.